okay, there's not really a good way to polish this. And I just need to get it out there because integrity and honesty and accuracy are things that are very important to me as a creator. Being a content creator can be a lot of fun. It can be very rewarding. It can equally be demoralizing. When you work really hard on a video, you put it out there and nobody watches it. That's demoralizing. When you work really hard on a video, you put it out there and you forgot one little thing and you made a mistake and everyone in the comment section lets you know about it. Uh, that's also demoralizing and that also happened to me. Hi, I made a video the other day about the ASUS Tough Gaming LC2 360 AIO and unfortunately, I did not clarify my BIOS settings and because of that, the data points I presented were in fact accurate in and of themselves. However, the framework or the context around those data points was a little bit skewed and so a lot of people didn't like that. They left some negative comments and it made me realize, hey, you know what? I really messed up there. I should have done a better job at clarifying the settings I was using in the BIOS and for whatever reason, I didn't and so that's on me, that's my bad. I also had a little bit of pushback because I was using a 3070. Now I'm going to address all of that. So this video, we're gonna talk about the mistake I made and what the BIOS settings were. We're gonna talk about the temperatures using true default standard BIOS settings, off the shelf settings. And we're also gonna be rerunning everything using a 7900 XT instead of a 3070. The focus of the last video had nothing to do with the 14900K. This was not a big 50 game benchmark CPU video. This was a video focused on the AIO. The subject of the video was the AIO. So for me, I wasn't sitting there being too worried about the fact that I was using a 3070. I was mostly worried about the fact, hey, I need to get a really hot CPU and see how well this AIO can perform with that CPU. But a lot of you really just focus on the fact that it was a 3070. So for this video, I'm using a 7900 XT, which a Patreon member has provided to me. Thank you, Shadow. I really do appreciate it, man. And for those interested, I will have a before you buy a 7900 XT video coming up in the next couple of weeks. Get subscribe so you don't miss it. Now let's talk about those bio settings. Now in my previous video, I showed a multi-core Cinebench test where this AIO was able to hold the 14900K down the 92C. However, the only way I was able to do that was by implementing this one bio setting called disabled enforce all limits. And you're gonna find this next to the ASUS multi-core enhancement section. And when you look at the description below, it clearly says disabled Intel default turbo core ratio settings. Now what this means is that when you don't utilize this setting in the BIOS, then you're not using Intel's default settings. You're using ASUS's default settings. And ASUS's default settings are auto let BIOS optimize. And essentially what this does is enable ASUS's optimized core ratio turbo settings for the 14900K. And so if you look on Intel's website, you can see where Intel says the maximum turbo power should be 253 watts. And when you use the setting that I just showed you, disable and force all limits, that's what you get. You get a maximum of 250 53 watts. And that's exactly how I was able to achieve 92C with a Cinebench multi-core stress test in my last video is by using that setting. And so I'm sorry I didn't clarify that. Now I am clarifying it. Now it's not all bad because now I can tell my family and friends whenever they buy an Asus motherboard and an Intel CPU, hey, by the way, if you feel like your temperatures are a little bit too high, go into your BIOS and check this setting for disable and force all limits and your maximum wattage will be capped and now your overall temperatures will come down. And now to re-clarify in my previous video, I did not clarify these settings and that was my mistake. And then I also ended up comparing this AIO to other creators and their testing results. And that was also not really an app comparison simply because they were obviously not using this setting. So there you have it, I put it out there. Now, the other thing we're changing here is the GPU. Instead of using a 3070, we're using a 7900 XT. And now that we're using the 7900 XT, I want to retest what I've already tested using the disable and force all limits and see if there's any difference there. And and then I also want to test not using disable and force all limits and use the standard default off the shelf settings, which is let the BIOS optimize and see what happens. Okay, I'm currently using disable and force all limits as my BIOS setting. And I have decided to retest the multi-core test in Cinebench using the 7900 XT. And as you can see, we've gone up by about one to two degrees, depending on what you're looking at when compared to my previous video using the RTX 3070 with the same setting. The CPU package is now 93C instead of 92C. And the maximum core temperature is now 94C instead of 92C. And if you look at the average, 
averages. You can see the CPU package is averaging around 87C, and you can see the core temperatures are averaging around 78C. And if you look at the overall CPU package power, you can see it is in fact capping out at 253 watts, which is exactly what we would expect with this specific BIOS setting. But now the question is, what do we get when we disable this BIOS setting and rerun the exact same test? Okay, here you go. This is truly off the shelf default settings of this motherboard BIOS. It is set to auto, let BIOS optimize. And as you can see, our core temperature is at 100C and our CPU package is at 100C and our core max is at 100C and our CPU package is at 101C and our maximum CPU package power is 307 watts. That is a massive uplift over the previous 253 watts. And now if you look at the average, we're averaging about 254 watts in the CPU package power. Our CPU package temperature is averaging at 91C and our core temperature is averaging at 81C. Okay, next up is an application from Intel called XTU. It stands for Extreme Tuning Utility. In my previous video, I peaked at 91C on the benchmark using disable and force all limits. But now I'm testing it again using the true default settings of the BIOS, which is let BIOS optimize. And as you can see, we are peaking at 100C. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077. This is ran at 1080p using the in-game benchmark with the ray tracing ultra preset with no upscaling of any kind. On the left-hand side, we have the disabled and force all limit setting. And on the right-hand side, we do have the default true out of the box settings, which is let BIOS optimize. And as you can see, everything is more or less about the same. It's about the same frame rate. It's about the same amount of wattage. It's about the same temperature on the 14900K. If there ever is a little bit more of a spike on one side or the other, it is obviously on the right hand side with let BIOS optimize. Every now and again, that is pulling in a little bit more wattage. But at the end of the day, even using the disabled and force all limit setting, you're still maxed and capped at 253 watts, which is significantly more than what any normal game is going to pull in. And so my previous test was still valid and accurate for Cyberpunk, but here is a 7900 XT with this test for those who care. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 1080p, maxed out settings, no upscaling, and this is the in-game benchmark. And again, as you can see, a very similar case to Cyberpunk 2077, everything is more or less about the same, regardless of the setting you're using. And as you can see, that 14 900k temperature is definitely being checked and being maintained by the AIO cooler. Yeah, there's no issue here and it doesn't really matter which setting you're using. It doesn't matter if you're using the 3070 or the 7900 XT. You can see the 3070 data in my previous video. Either way, this AIO can handle the 14900K in this game on max settings at 1080p. Okay, if you're watching this, first of all, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for watching any video I make. But secondly, thank you for watching a second video on the same product and allowing me to clarify the data points from the previous previous video. Again, most of the information in my video, my previous video is completely accurate and valid and relevant for a lot of people, but I just wanted to add an extra layer of clarification. And that's what this video does. A lot of people wanted to push back to on the 3070 and claiming, hey, if you use the GPU that put off more heat, you wouldn't have great temperatures. And I think this kind of shows that's not true, even with the 7900 XT and regardless of which bio setting you're using in gaming, for the most part, you're going to be below 200 watts. Maybe every now and again, you'll temporarily peak at 200 or 210 watts, but you're never going to hit 253 watts and you're definitely not gonna hit 300 watts. And so this AIO is more than capable of keeping a 14900K cool while gaming. And at 1080p, you're more CPU bound than you are GPU bound. So that's actually putting extra load on there. So simply going up to 1440p or 4K wouldn't really change the results all that much. Now, after my previous video, I did talk to ASUS and I did get a little bit more clarification about some of the selling points related to the AIO. And I wanna share that with you because also I had some comments where people asked these questions and because I didn't cover it in the video, they didn't have the information. And I was able to respond to the comments and say, hey, here you go. So the radiator size is 27 millimeters. The tube length is 400 millimeters. 
And another benefit of having that decoupled pump is the fact that the head of the AIO is now smaller because it doesn't have the pump on the inside of it. And because it's smaller, that does allow for more compatibility in smaller cases and ITX motherboards and things of that nature. And so that's one of the main selling points of this specific Tough Gaming AIO is the fact that they are allowing for extra compatibility with a bigger variety of cases and smaller motherboards. And I wanted to be sure that I offer that information in this video because I definitely didn't offer it in the last video. And like I said, I did have people asking those questions. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching any of my videos, but especially thank you if you're watching a second video on the same product only a day or two apart. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate the support. Hey, if you like this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.